Hello and welcome to Power to the People with me, Graham Price. About 10 days or so ago, I made a video about Labour changing the winter fuel allowance from universal to means tested. It's obviously quite a big talking point at the moment and I was appalled by the amount of misinformation and disinformation I was seeing about it. If the Tories were still in office and it was their idea, we could just suppose that there would be another scandal in a few days' time and everybody would forget about it. It had come out that say, Christopher Chope had a season ticket for Epstein's Island or that Jacob Rees-Mogg had hidden a million pounds worth of gold coins with Thatcher's fucking face stamped on them in the Cayman Islands or something. Or maybe it had come out that the Tories had given billions of pounds to pretend PPI firms when they implemented a fast-track programme for giving their mates lucrative contracts. Oh no, hang on. That has come out, and the right-wing media have literally tried to hide it, and no one else has done anything about it. Not even Labour. Not so far, anyway. Sorry, I just got carried away for a moment there, and forgot that we live in a fucking ridiculous country. A country where if Keir Starmer kicked a dog on Tuesday, thousands of people on Twitter would be calling him a bastard and calling for him to be hung but if Boris Johnson kicked a dog on Wednesday 90% of our media and thousands of right-wing twat bags all over Twitter would be saying Boris tackles the problem of overcrowding by dogs with direct action let's all lick his bum hole I may have overstated the issue just very slightly there but I think you probably get it anyway Let's have a little word about my latest thoughts on the winter fuel allowance thing right after this. I was just looking at my channel analytics and I noticed that 53% of people who watch my videos weren't subscribed. The pain. Come on, just have a quick check that you've subbed, liked and rang the bell. Make a skinny old scouser a little bit happier today. Somebody recently and very kindly brought it to my attention that some of the numbers I quoted in my last video were incorrect. Well, I'm not a Tory voter or a reform voter or a trumpet or a flat earther. And I'm actually capable of changing my opinions based on new evidence rather than blindly following some fool with a fast gob. So I paid special attention. As I've said before, I'm unashamedly left wing, but I do try to look at primary, secondary and tertiary sources from both the left and the right and also from fact-checking websites before I commit to saying anything in my videos. I don't pretend not to be biased. If nothing else, the last 14 years have often proven that the right wing are easily fooled, ignorant, naive and often racist. And I will stand by that statement, even if it does make me sound biased. Many studies have proven that people with extreme right wing views are generally less intelligent than the normal folk among us. Unfortunately, sometimes they're also rich enough to get into private schools and be educated in Cambridge or Oxford, so their base stupidity is covered to some extent. As an example, I present Rhys Mogg, Boris Johnson, David Cameron, Ian Duncan Smith, James Cleverley, Michael fucking Fabricant. He thinks that we believe that that wig is actually his hair. I've said it before, and I don't mind saying it again. There's a big difference between educated and intelligent. A fucking idiot can go to Oxford and be educated. But he's still a fucking idiot, isn't he? Sadly, we live in an era where idiots are continually platformed and held up as examples of decency by our media sources. But I still try to take in a whole range of opinions before I comment on something. It would seem that the amount of pensioners who are set to lose their winter fuel allowance is quite a bit higher than I was led to believe when I made my last video. Although it also seems that the numbers of pensioners that are entitled to pension credits that I mentioned was far lower than Labour are now saying though. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. Kind of. Sort of. Maybe. I've been quite busy in this last week and I've had some stuff going on as I've mentioned on my community page. I haven't been able to follow everything that's been going on with Labour and everything as closely as I'd like. I'm not very happy about this winter fuel thing. Labour should be going after people like Michelle Moan or other nasty bastards that profited because the Tories were in office. 
Or people that already have enough money to last 50 lifetimes and are still trying to avoid paying tax. I did listen to Angela Rayner being interviewed by James O'Brien a few days ago, though, and he didn't give her an easy ride, as you might expect. He asked some quite aggressive and probing questions, and she answered honestly in almost all cases, and where she didn't, it wasn't because she was outright lying or sharing a bit of right-wing propaganda. It was because he was just asking her questions that she either didn't know the answer to or didn't know the party line for. She is a politician, after all. It was so poles apart from an interview with a Tory. I never got a chance to make a video called Five Reasons Oliver Dowden is a Twat, but I kind of wish I did. It would be nice to be able to compare the bullshit he continually spouted as Deputy Prime Minister to the honesty that Angela Rayner displays quite regularly. The winter fuel thing is fucking stupid though, isn't it? It, it looks so bad. Why have they chosen this to be the, the first hill to die on? Uh, if Labour are going to be doing stupid things like this for the next five years, they're probably not going to get my vote again in 2029. I think the main point of this video wasn't, was it, it wasn't just to admit that I got some figures wrong. I'll always do that if I can. It was to point out that even if you are determined to only report facts, you're always in a constant battle to find them. The media is just talking continual bullshit in the last few weeks since Labour took office. We seriously need Labour to commit to some sort of media reform because the Daily Mail and GB News, sorry, GBBs are just being allowed to tell blatant, outright lies to millions of people every day in this country. That isn't civilization, is it? I'm not sure what it actually is, but it shouldn't ever be something that's part of a civilised nation. So in my opinion, a lot of this discussion around the winter fuel payment is confected rage. It's millionaires and billionaires who consider £300 to be pocket change, trying to convince genuinely poor people that they should be more angry about what Labour have done in the last two months than what they helped the Tories to do in the last 14 years. I can guarantee that none of these right-wing rags screaming about Starmer are mentioning that the state pension is set to rise by over £450 in 2025. Or that one in five pensioners are millionaires. Or that 78% of the wealth in the UK is held by people over 50. The Tory figures claim that just 188,000 people could claim, who could claim pension credits weren't doing so. And they did absolutely nothing to address that. That was wildly incorrect. It's so far off the mark that the number is actually closer to 880,000. And initiatives by Labour have already seen a 40,000 person surge in people claiming pension credits. So there are already 40,000 people better off than they were before this policy was announced. And let's not forget, a single person on universal credit gets less than £4,000 a year to live on. A pensioner gets just less than 9000 which isn't enough. Don't get me wrong, I would massively increase that given the opportunity immediately. But this suggestion that Labour are targeting the poorest in society, it's just simply not true. Pensioners are far from the poorest people in society. The people that the Tories bullied, attacked and labelled scroungers for the last 14 years are the poorest people in society. That's why you'll find dozens of them sleeping in doorways every time you go to any big city. I can guarantee the guy sleeping in the doorway with a filthy duvet at your local Aldi isn't going to get the winter fuel allowance. And if he did, he wouldn't have any home or heating to spend it on. And that's because of the Tories, not because of Labour. That doesn't mean that I'm fully on board with the winter fuel thing. I'm really not. And I think it's terrible optics for Labour. But don't forget that the people who write headlines like this would attack Labour no matter what they did.
This is confected rage from people who convinced a large majority of pensioners to vote for David Cameron, and then Brexit, and then Theresa May, then Boris fucking Johnson, and then Liz Truss, and then try to convince them to let the nightmare continue by telling them to vote for Rishi Sunak and sharing every lie that the dishonest little rat told during the election campaign as if it was gospel. They don't care about pensioners. They just care about right-wing ideology and money. If Rupert Murdoch actually lived in the UK, under the Tories system, he'd get the winter fuel allowance payments. Do you think that's right? I don't. I've got no animosity whatsoever towards the MPs of any party that decided to vote against this or the Labour MPs that abstained. The point of this video was to address the viewers that had pointed out that my figures weren't spot on rather than to try and justify the policy. I think it's reasonably fair to means test it, but I think it's really stupid that Labour chose to do this as something so early in their time in office. That being said, do you think there is anything at all that Labour could do that would be reported fairly and accurately by the Daily Mail or the Telegraph or GB, sorry, GBBs? I think we all know the answer to that. Thank you for watching if you've gotten this far. I'm guessing this video might be a, a bit controversial, but all views are welcome, as always. Just try to be polite, or at least be funny if you're going to try and insult me. Don't call me a lefty. I've never been more proud to be a lefty in my life. Look at the state of what 14 years of right-wing government has done to this country. If you haven't subscribed yet, remember to do so before you bugger off. And if you want to help out a bit more, there are links to Patreon or to the Buy Me A Coffee page in the description box. Or you can always hit the join button for memberships and it's always very, very much appreciated indeed. Now, of course, that isn't all I have to say. But it is as much of what I've got to say as I'm going to say today. ta la It's about to start recording and a bloody aeroplane's going over. It's like living on a aircraft carry around here sometimes, the amount of aeroplanes that go over. But then I remember that Liverpool John Lennon Airport is regularly voted the best airport in the country. So, you know, kind of got to deal with it, haven't you?